All right, Jeff says it's good. Well, good morning. Welcome to Grace Fellowship. First day of daylight savings time. Yeehaw. You work now till 9 o'clock at night. What I'm excited about. Yeah. That's good. It gives you more time to enjoy God's fun things out there all over the world. Well, good morning. Welcome to Grace Fellowship up there. Uh, we're going to get started with Trading My Sorrow. I'm trading my sorrows, I'm trading my shame, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Singing, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. I am pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure. And his joy is going to be my strength. Though sorrow may last for a night, his joy comes with the morning. I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness, I'm trading my pain, I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. We're singing, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. I am pressed but not crushed, persecuted, not abandoned, struck down but not destroyed. I am blessed beyond the curse, for his promise will endure, and his joy is going to be my strength. Though sorrow may last for a night, his joy comes with the morning. Yeah, I'm trading my sorrow. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. I'm trading my sickness, no pain. I'm trading my pain. I'm laying them down for the joy of the Lord. Yes, we're singing, yes. Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. We're singing, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, amen. Amen. All right. Let's see everybody clapping out there. I like to see that. Swaying back and forth, dancing, <laughs> enjoying it. God is good. Okay, you can do Awake My Soul. You wake my soul an hour earlier this today, though. <laughs> Face 
strongest lines in that when I need your Holy Spirit more than life itself then Christ is formed in me powerful <coughs> two phrases all right hungry hungry I come to you for I know you satisfy. I am empty, but I know your love does not run dry. So I wait for you. So I wait. So I wait 
In need of grace, in need of grace, in need of love, in need of love, in need of mercy, mercy raining down from high above. In need of strength, in need of strength, in need of peace, in need of peace, in need of things that only you can give to me. In need of is my song, my humble plea. I am your child. I am in need. In need of grace. In need of grace. In need of love. In need of love. In need of mercy raining down from high above. In need of strength, in need of strength, in need of peace, in need of peace, in need of things that only you can give to me. In need of Christ, the perfect Lamb, my refuge strong, the great I am. This is my song, my humble plea. I am your child, I am in need. 
in need of Christ, the perfect Lamb, my refuge strong, the great I am. This is my song, my humble plea, I am your child, I am in I am in thee. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we are your child. We need you so much each and every day. Your grace, your love. It's amazing. We thank you so much for all the things you do that you thought of from the very start. You knew we need a Savior. You knew we couldn't do this on our own. You gave your Son to die upon the cross for each and every one of us. We thank you so much for that. But we're so thankful that it didn't end at the cross. Jesus conquering death, arising on the third day, ascending to heaven, sitting at your right hand, interceding for us each and every day. Lord, we thank you. So many great things we don't even think about each and every day, just waking up an hour earlier today. By your grace. And so, Lord, we just pray that, that you walk with us each step of the way. Go with us throughout this week. We thank you so much for the rain you blessed us with. We just pray that you do continue with more. Thank you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, good morning. Good to see everybody here. The few, the proud. Yes, we survived Corona. Still surviving. Yes. All right, I've got a good verse here this morning. It's Isaiah 41.10. It's a good one to memorize. I'll read it to you. So do not fear, for I am with you. And do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. That's a good one to keep in your back pocket. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come here today really with the spirit of thanksgiving. Uh, we thank you so much for your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you for your grace and the forgiveness that we all need, every single one of us. And we thank you for the ability to gather here and still speak freely. Lord, please open our hearts and minds today uh, so that we will uh, receive the message and uh, take it out into the world with us this week. In your name we pray, amen. be on now is that right okay Galatians chapter 6 and uh, read the whole chapter brethren if anyone is caught in any trespass you who are spiritual restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness each one looking to yourself so that you too will not be tempted Bear one another's burdens and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. For if anyone thinks he is something when he is nothing, he deceives himself. 
But each one should examine his own work, and then he will have reason for boasting in regard to himself alone, and not in regard to another. For each one will bear his own load. The one who has taught the word is to share all good things with the one who teaches him. Do not be deceived, God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, this will he also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will reap will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Let us not lose heart in doing good, for in due time we will reap if we do not grow weary. So then, while we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, and especially to those who are of the household of faith. See with what large letters I am writing to you with my own hands. Those who desire to make a good showing in the flesh try to compel you to be circumcised simply so they will not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. For those who are circumcised do not even keep the law themselves, but they desire to have you circumcised so that they may boast in your flesh. But may it never be that I would boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ through which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision is anything nor uncircumcision, but a new creation. And those who will walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. From now on, let no one cause trouble for me, for I bear on my body the brand marks of Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit, brethren. Amen. Let's begin with a word of prayer as we look at God's word. Our Heavenly Father, we know the need for your Holy Spirit to enlighten us, to teach us the things that we need to, to learn from your word. And um, just we pray that we would be able to put these into practice in our lives. Help us to glorify you in all that we say and do. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. When I was relatively young, I was in baseball and uh, in the excitement of the, of the game, sometimes people used words that weren't very good. And I picked up some of those words and there was a person on the team that confronted me about that. And I realized that I was taking God's name in vain. And so that was helpful to have that confrontation. Much later in life, when I was married, uh, my wife noticed that sometimes under stress, some of those same words came out again. And uh, she also confronted me. And it was also good to be confronted by, by her. So those were game-changing kind of uh, situations for me. One was because I was on a team. And one was because of my marriage. Um, you might also think of COVID-19 as a game changer. Because um, it's changed the way how we've had to do business in the United States. You know, uh, 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 places that uh, serve people food have had to redo how they do things. So that, um, you know, they can do more takeout and and that kind of thing, and have to put signs on the door about masks and all that kind of stuff. And so, yeah, it's changed the way that we uh, have had to do business here. Paul, in Galatians 6, has five game-changing principles, and we're going to be looking at those principles today. And um, I put the word new in all those principles to make it a little easier. So we're in a new household, the household of faith, new power for living, living by the Spirit, new union, new creation, and new nation. And um, so we'll try to look at each one of those principles and the uh, practical application of those principles. So the household of faith, we're going to be talking about uh, this new household of uh, the one caught in a transgression, sharing with the teacher and doing good, the power 
new power that we have for living is not through the flesh anymore, but in the spirit. Uh, this new union, uh, united to Christ and his cross through which the world is crucified to us and we're crucified to the world. The new creation, we're created in the image of God, which leads to a new way of walking or behaving. And then a new nation, we're the Israel of God. Circumcision of the flesh is not important but what's important is we're a nation made by God. So first of all, household of faith, that word is used in verse 10 of Galatians 6. So Galatians 3, uh, talks, uh, verse 29, talks about Abraham's, if we belong to Christ, we're Abraham's offspring. Of course, Abraham is one who believed in God. If, so we're, if, was, if his offspring, we believe in God. In Galatians 5, 6, talks about faith working through love. So as we believe in God, we love others, and that's how we show our faith. And, and this, we have several applications of that principle here in this chapter. The first being uh, how to approach the uh, fellow Christian who's caught in sin. So the first thing I want to say about this is that we're dealing here with fellow Christians. It says, brothers... And it also says um, that we're bearing one another's burdens. So it's talking about fellow Christians. Doesn't mean you can't talk to a non-Christian about sin as well. But particularly we are, uh, have a responsibility to those who are Christians. Um, and um, so it's kind of interesting there. You notice that the, the phrase bear one another's burdens. Later on in verse 5. It's going to say um, each will bear his own load. And so that sounds kind of a little different. One says bear one another's and the other says bear your own load. So uh, as we look at that and look at the Greek term, there's actually a different Greek term for each of those. The one bear your own load is more the term for like a backpack. So if you're on a hike and you're with a group of people, you're assigned certain things that you need to carry so if you're little maybe they give you a little backpack and if you're bigger you get a bigger backpack but each one is supposed to carry his his load so that all the full load will be carried there but this burden is something that's a little heavier it's more difficult to bear and uh, and so this is where we can can uh, be helped by another so it says the one is caught it may be a bad habit that uh, a, a person has slipped into Maybe not really recognized for what it is. So you're, you're dealing with a person who's a Christian. They're trying to please the Lord, but they've slipped into something. And it says you who are spiritual. So that would be relying upon the Holy Spirit. As you realize, you can't change somebody else. I mean, the Holy Spirit has to be at work in their life. And you should know the word of God, how the matter is a trespass. I mean, there's certain things that maybe something's do, someone's doing something different than what you would do, but it's not wrong. They bought a red carpet for their house, and you think they should have bought a blue carpet. Well, it doesn't really make any difference. So they don't need to confront somebody on, on, on that kind of thing. But we're talking about when there is actual sin, and the Word of God uh, defines it as something that falls short of what God uh, requires, that's when you go and uh, talk to that person but we have to have the correct attitude when we uh when we go it, it emphasizes that it has to be done gently um matthew eighteen fifteen talks specifically that if it's a private sin it should be done in a private fashion if some someone did something and you're the only one that knows about that you don't just right in front of everybody at the church say well, why'd you do this you know, that, that's inappropriate um, uh, to, to start off that way. Um, um, and you're, you're not to do it harshly uh, or arrogantly. Um, you realize that you, you yourself are, um, are subject to the same kind of thing. First uh, Corinthians uh, 10, verse 12. Therefore, let him who... Let him who thinks he stands take heed that he does not fall. So we, we are subject to falling because we're people too. So um, 
And we're not to be judging somebody. We recognize that God is the one who judges people. Sure, we're, we're, we're mentioning something as being a sin, but we're not ultimately the one that's judging that person. And we shouldn't be comparing ourselves to others so that we can boast. Just imagine that there's a test that you did. And let's say you made a 60 and the, the perfect score was 100. But you're in a class and, and there's another student that made a 50 and another one that made a 45. So if you compare yourself to a, another, you can say, ah, look, I made a 60. I made better than anybody in the class. Um, and so you can boast. But if you compare yourself to uh, the standard, you realize that you can't really boast. And, uh, and that's the way it is with us. We are all people. We all fall very short of what God requires. And so we, we can't be boasting uh, of ourselves and how good we are. And the goal is restoration. Uh, that's, that's what we're trying to do. Uh, and so it's not to prove yourself better than somebody else. It's not revenge. It's you know, not something else. But to try to restore that person so that, um, so that they, uh, whatever issue it is that uh, you're dealing with, that they turn away from that and turn back to what they should be doing. And in that way, you're loving your neighbor and fulfilling the law of Christ. Next, sharing all good things with the one who teaches. So as in a family, uh, those who teach are important for the whole family. Um, and it, it, it does take work to, to do teaching. Um, uh, so it is in the church. We're, we're all a, a family, and those who teach us um, uh, deserve certain things. 1 Timothy 5, 17 talks a little bit about this. The elders who rule well are to be considered worthy of double honor, especially those who work hard at preaching and teaching. So it's not always easy to, to do the preaching and teaching. It does, it does take some work, or it should. Uh, hopefully your elders are doing that, doing their hard work. Uh, but uh, they should be have honor in terms of how you treat them. But also, it's a double honor in, in terms of also um, uh, supporting them financially. Um, you know, there's, there's people that are tent makers that uh, uh, work and then also, uh, you know, teach church. But that's very, very difficult to do, uh, to have a 40-hour-a-week job and then to have another full-time job. Of, of of the ministry and so uh and that's what we we try to do is to is to give those who uh preach uh some some reward for their their labor um and uh, the other thing that i think of in terms of all good things is prayer the bible does call us to pray for our leaders and so that's part of the respect that we have as we pray for them and hold them up um uh, knowing that it's a hard job, and, and, and they need our, our support. And lastly, they're doing good to the household of faith. It actually says do good to all men, but it says in particular to those of the household of faith. So uh, we can think of things such as the restoration that we've talked about, building and up and encouraging others. And uh, we see that quite a bit. As we fellowship with one another, people encourage and, and build one another up. Prayer for others. Um, and, you know, different people are undergoing uh, different things in their lives. And I'm sure Andy and Sarah and others have been in your prayers uh, um, as they are recuperating from surgeries. Um, uh, but we all, we all have needs that need to be prayed for. Um, I'd like to read from uh, 1 Timothy 5, 9, 9 through 10. Talk about several different ways of doing good in the church. A widow is to be put on the list only if she is not less than 60 years old, having been the wife of one man, having a reputation for good works, and if she's brought up children, 
if she has shown hospitality to strangers, if she has washed the saints' feet, if she has assisted those in distress, and if she has devoted herself to every good work. So we see there the bringing up of children as a good work, uh, hospitality, um, helping those who are in, in trouble, um, and um, financial help to widows uh, in the church. All of those are, are some of these good, good things that we can be doing in the church. So then we'll turn to this new power for living. Uh, we live not by the flesh, but by the spirit. And the results that we get depend on what we sow. So if you want to grow corn, you plant corn. If you want to grow oats, you plant oats. It, and uh, you get what you, you sow. And so it is with uh, this, um, uh, with our lives. So to, to get spiritual fruit, fruit, first you have to be born of the spirit. And then you have to use what's called the means of grace. Now, the means of grace are not automatic uh, ways that God blesses us, but uh, God uses them. And, and what I mean by not automatic, the first means of grace I have is reading the word of God. Now, you can read the word of God, pay no attention to it, and it doesn't do you any good, right? Because uh, your mind wasn't really on it. And the Holy Spirit didn't really use that in your life. But on the other hand, uh, uh, there's things in the word of God that you need. And and that's it's, it's a necessary thing for you to do to read God's word. So you need to be doing that as as part of how the Holy Spirit can can uh, be in charge of your life. Church attendance. Um, so again, it's not magic. Just being in church doesn't automatically mean you're going to be blessed. But uh, th that's what God has called us to do. And so it's something we should be doing. Prayer. Um, again, prayer can become kind of a ritual. And, you know, if you just recite the Lord's Prayer and don't think about it, uh, that doesn't do you a whole lot of good. Uh, but... Um, uh, so we, we're called not to do vain repetition, but we are called to pray and to talk to God, and, and, and that is a means of grace. Fellowship with others, uh, other Christians, heeding discipline and advice. So when people come to you and have some advice, uh, pay attention to it. Uh, and if they come to you and, and confront you on something, uh, don't... Um, Ignore it, uh, listen to what they have to say, and, and learn from it. And then the sacraments. Again, it's a, a means we have to think about what Jesus has done for us and, and where God can uh, exercise his grace in our lives. On the other hand, to get fleshly deeds, that we just ignore the word of God. We do what we think is right. We fail to pray. And... Ignore advice and discipline of others, and we get fleshly deeds. Sometimes it takes uh, time for um, to get results when we're doing good, um, and um, so let's see. Huh, it's a little bit out of order. I think that's going back to the uh, doing good, but. Um, I'm going to cover it anyway. Uh, so uh, and when you're doing good, we need to be patient uh, in doing good and not give up. And we do good to everyone because it's right and not because of what you'll get back from, from doing good. All right, so we've covered the, uh, the first point, that the, the new household of faith. And what that means, we've covered the second point, this new power that we have for living and then third, we have this new union. Uh, we're united to Christ and, with, and into his death and resurrection. Um, so Romans 6, uh, 5 through 7 talks about this. For if we have become united with him in the likeness of his death, certainly we shall also be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old self was crucified with him in order that our body of sin might be done away with 
so that we would no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died is freed from sin. And as we're united to Christ, um, and as, as we see Christ uh, it died, we recognize that his death was a, as a substitute for us. It wouldn't be just for Christ to die if he was dying for himself, because Christ didn't sin. And so the only way his, his, uh, his death was just and is that he bore our sins and therefore bore God's punishment for us. So the cross shows us that sin is wrong. And, and so if we come to the cross for salvation, we acknowledge that the world system is, is no longer for us. And, um, and that we have to, to, to trust in him. We can't save ourselves. And the cross is, um, for this reason, um, people are, are persecuted for the cross. And, and Paul specifically mentions that persecution in two places in this passage. First, he says that those who are teaching circumcision, one of the reasons they're teaching that is so they won't be persecuted. Uh, and uh, because people don't like to hear that they can't save themselves, that they can't do something. So if you give them circumcision, it gives them something they can do. So you're not persecuted in telling people they can't please God and that they have to trust in Christ. The other place that you see circumcision is, is or persecution is at the end of the chapter where Paul says that he bears on his body the marks of Christ. Remember Paul, he was stoned, he was whipped, uh, all because he was a Christian and uh, he was proclaiming the gospel. And I'm sure that left marks on him. He probably wasn't the prettiest person to look at. Uh, but that's God um, um, took care of him. And, um, uh, but um, the, the cross is, is not always something that is... Um, uh, that men like. In fact, they typically don't like it. Um, so as we as we see the cross, um, and uh, it's it's the opposite of the world. Um, and we I would like to read Col Colossians three five through ten, which which talks about what this means in our lives. Therefore, consider the members of your earthly body as dead to immorality, impurity passion, evil desire, and greed, which amounts to idolatry. For it is because of all these things that the wrath of God will come upon the sons of disobedience. And in them you also once lived when you were living in them. But now you also put them all aside, anger, wrath, malice, slander, and abusive speech from your mouth. Do not lie to one another since you laid aside the old self with its evil practices and have put on the new self who is being renewed to a true knowledge according to the image of the one who created him. So that union with Christ, uh, you know, means that we're dead to the things in the world and we have this new self. We're alive to what God would have us to do. Our old nature has died with Christ. Colossians 2.20 If you have died with Christ to the elementary, elementary principles of the world, why, as if living in the world, do, sh do, you, do you submit yourselves to decrees such as... And then the next verse, but anyway. Um, and then um, Colos uh, Galatians 2.20 uh, our old nature no longer lives. Christ lives in us. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. So as we, as we conclude thinking about the, uh, the cross the world is crucified to us. We're no longer living for the world. And uh, um, we have been crucified to the world. So um, then we have, um, we are a new creation as those who are Christians. 
And I'd like to read from uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. And um, so as those who are a new creation, there is a new walk that Galatians uh, 6 verse 16 talks about. Uh, that we, we walk a different way. Uh, Ephesians 4.24 talks about that we put on a new self. Uh, let's see. And put on the new self, which in the likeness of God has been created in righteousness and holiness of the truth. And then we already refer, referred before to that passage in Colossians uh, chapter 3, which also talks about putting off the old man with his deeds and putting on the new man. Um, so, and then lastly, this last principle is that we're a new nation. We're the Israel of God. So, um, in verse... Um, um, 16 of chapter 6. It talks about all who walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. So I think those are actually, that and is it's not saying two different groups of people, those who walk by this rule, the new creation, and a different group, the Israel of God. That's the same group. If we are the Israel of God, we walk uh, a different way. Um, but so I think he's using that Israel of God as referring to the to the church there. Uh, outward things are not enough. Circumcision is not enough. Uh, the the nation of Israel, they were circumcised, at least when they were being obedient, they were supposed to be circumcised. Uh, and yet they weren't all they didn't always live a life like one who was supposed to live, who'd been circumcised. They weren't always devoted to the Lord. So what matters is in the heart, not externally. Um, in uh, Galatians 3.29, it says that, you know, if we belong to Christ, we're Abraham's seed. We're, we're part of this uh, covenant, this, this nation that comes from Abraham. And uh, in Galatians 3.14, if we're redeemed, then we've received the promise, the Holy Spirit. Remember, that was part of the covenant promise. Uh, uh, and, um, you know, it's referred to in Acts chapter 2, the, the Spirit being the, the promise, the blessings to the nations that would come through, through Abraham. First uh, Peter 2, um, 9 through 10. So... This is a very interesting passage. Peter is using words that were spoken of to the nation of Israel, but he's applying them to the church. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who's called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For once you were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. So clearly he's talking about Gentiles here. They were once not a people, but now they are the people of God. We're the Israel of God, so to speak. The true, true Israel. Um, and then Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verses 12 through 13, talks about the Gentiles being brought near. Remember that you were at that time separate from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers to the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who are formerly were far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. So Gentiles have been brought near. Uh, we're part of that Israel of, of God. And then um, Ephesians 2, 19 through 22. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household. Having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the cornerstone. 
in whom the whole building being fitted together is growing into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also being built together into a dwelling of God in the Spirit. So he's talking about the Gentiles and their fellow citizens. Uh, we're, we're part of that same nation, the Israel of God. And interestingly, in that last part of that passage, he talks about us being the, the temple. God dwells in us. So no longer is the physical temple so important where the glory of God dwelled in a building, but God's glory dwells in us as his people. So then practical application, just to kind of remind and, and maybe emphasize a little bit more how these things uh, change how we live. So recognize the importance of us being in the household of God and that we should seek to restore those who are caught in sin. Um, just like if you were in a, in, a, in a family and you had a family member that did something wrong, you'd want to uh, talk to your family member about that. So it is in the church. We support our leaders um, by... Uh, Various means, uh, the respect, the prayer, the um, uh, uh, financial support, do good to Christians. And this can include a number of things. Um, uh, certainly we communicate with others and learn of their needs and uh, so that we can pray for them. Not so that we can gossip or something like that, but so we can pray for them and uh, encourage them. Uh, maybe somebody's making a move. In fact, I know if somebody is making a move uh, and uh, and so helping somebody move can be a way that you show your love for for them. Uh, picking up groceries for others, particularly in this time of covid when uh, there was, uh, um, you know, concern about going to the store. I, I saw Andy's note that he's willing to go pick up stuff for people. And I'm, I'm sure there's been others in the church that have picked up. Uh, food or taken food to people who've been sick and um, and weren't able to um, to get that food visiting the sick um, and of course in these days of telephones uh, sometimes a visit is a little easier for us to do but some of you visited with Sarah and some of you visited by phone that's that's fine so that's uh, that's a way to visit of course we don't mind in-person visits too but uh, um, there's various ways to visit, and, and that is encouraging for people. Do good to all men. Uh, so when we're voting, we vote with a view to what's best for, for everybody. Um, you know, it's easy to focus on yourself and, you know, what be in your best interest. But um, we, we should think about what's good for, for everybody. And, um, you know, it'd be great if the government gave us a, a bunch of money, uh, but then what would happen with the debt and, and, you know, all the other people having to be taxed to support that. So um, we need to vote with the view of what's good for everybody in the society. Be concerned about the safety of others. And I know that with this COVID epidemic, you know, one of the things that people have had, you know, it, um, thought for is, is, am I doing the right thing regarding my neighbor? You know, so... Those of you who've been sick and if I haven't gone somewhere because of that, that's that's a good thing. Uh, some of you put masks on partly because of your neighbor, realizing that, you know, if inadvertently you might have had something. Some of you gotten vaccinated, you know, to, to try to keep from spreading. And that's that's all good to be concerned about the safety of others. Be honest in your dealings with uh, with people. Um, and. Um, those are all Im important ways that we can do, do good to all men. Uh, we don't live just for pleasure. We're no longer living, you know, for the flesh. We're living uh, according to the spirit. And so we're living with what God wants us to do, not with what we want to do. And we should act as new creatures of those who've been created in the image of Christ. And so one of the uh, sayings that people have said to think about what we should do is what would Jesus do and that's a that's a reasonable thing sometimes that can be a little bit abstract and and sometimes people can imagine Jesus would do something that other people would say nah, I don't know if you do it that way or not uh, so I like to think of uh, uh, what did Jesus do 
because uh, it's a little bit more concrete. Um, but as we as we think about what did Jesus do, we also have to think there's uh, we don't necessarily follow him in everything. Uh, and two things I think about one, he was of the nation of Israel. So he was called to fulfill the ceremonial law there in Israel. So we we're no longer called to uh, to do that because Christ has fulfilled the ceremonial law. So um, it's not necessary to, to do all that that. And secondly, um, Jesus was also God. And uh, so he did some things that we can't really uh, imitate, such as. You know, he died for us as our substitute. Well, we're not called to do that. We are called to have sacrificial love, but not to die as a substitute. But g- keeping those things in mind, as we see what Jesus actually did, it does give us a good idea of what we should be doing as those who are in the image of, uh, who've been given that new self that's uh, created in the image of, of God. So let's close with a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this uh, word of the Apostle Paul that he wrote to the Galatians, uh, a church where um, there were those coming in who um, wanted to substitute uh, instead of the gospel relying on Jesus for our salvation, they wanted to put in works. And we know that works are are something that occurs in our life but it doesn't occur uh, it, works don't earn our salvation we realize that our salvation has been earned by Jesus Christ those works come as a result of what you've done in our lives we just pray that for each of us that your spirit would uh, live in us that we would work the, uh, the works of the spirit and not the flesh um, and um, we just pray in all these things that you would guide us. If if there is any um, sin that needs to be confronted, we pray that you would help us to do that in a way that's pleasing to you uh, and, and recognizing that we ourselves can be tempted just the same. Uh, we just pray that you would um, uh, bless each one today. Um, continue to protect us as we still have some cases of the covid uh seems to be much better but but still we know that we rely on your protection and uh, we uh, pray for the leaders of the church who meet today and uh, we'll discuss some matters uh, related to the church that you would guide us uh, and uh, we thank you that it looks like we'll be able to expand what we're doing say and do it safely I just pray that you would uh, bless our fellowship together. Um, In Jesus' name, amen.